So the last class we, we were talking about the moral philosophy and we, can you remind me which are the two main types of moral philosophy? Can anybody remind me? What are the two main types of moral philosophy? So consequence, consequential moral philosophy or what's the other type? Hmm? Right or wrong, it's called rights based. Okay? Consequential moral philosophy or rights based moral philosophy. So in the last class we had the discussion. So you should have an idea whether you are more rights based or consequentialist. Okay? It seems that many people in the class might lean more towards the consequentialist moral philosophy. Right? For example, the rights based moral philosophy person wouldn't kill the gold birds in the desert, right? They would say it's wrong to kill the innocent people. Okay. But you guys said that maybe you would to save some lives. So you were thinking a bit more about the consequences. Okay. But we're talking about Kant and Kant is very much a rights based okay? moral philosopher. So Kant, a lot of people or the modern society uses a lot of Kant's ideas. So, for example, Kant isn't even going to lie to a murderer. Right? That's how strict Kant is on the right space side. Okay? Even though a murderer asks him, where's your brother? He's not going to lie. Okay? Because, what's the word that begins with D that Kant is very interested in? Can you remember the word that starts with D and ends with Y? Dignity. So Kant thinks that people have dignity. So even though he's a murderer, he still has dignity. And he shouldn't lie to him. So the, the emperor asked Kant not to speak publicly about religion. At the time there was the emperor in Germany. Uh, and he replied, as your majesty's faithful subject, I shall in the future completely desist from all public lectures or papers concerning religion. Okay, so he made this kind of statement, but it means he's still able to do other things. Okay, he can still privately talk to people or that kind of thing. So discuss with your partner. Are there things that money shouldn't be able to buy? What are they? Thank you. 
not only a legal legal part. Mm. One can buy something through illegal. Yeah, but we were asking the question: Should should it should we be able to buy anything with money, or what should we not be able to buy? So I gave you the example of a slave. Do you think you can have a slave? Do you understand slave? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to? Can, do you think you should own another person? You're not shaking your head. You think yes? No. Oh, you tech? Yeah. Is slavery okay? Do you want to own a slave? No. God, slave is <laughs> slave is. Oh, you don't seem very right. sure. God, oh, You're not really sure. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking about it. In some, unfortunately, in some countries, we still have slavery, right? And up to a hundred years ago, in the U United States, especially in the southern part, slavery was quite common, okay? People owned slaves, they owned the other people, okay? But John Rawls is a philosopher, and he says that's wrong. We should not sacrifice our fundamental rights and liberties for social and economic benefits, okay? So for example, we shouldn't be able to buy votes. We shouldn't be able to pay people to vote for a politician, okay? Or you shouldn't have to give up some of your something for money, right? Somebody could ask you, give up your education and I'll give you money. So we shouldn't give up our fundamental rights and liberties for social and economic benefits. So, he has this principle called the difference principle. So only the social and economic inequalities are committed that can work to help the least advantaged members of societies. So if we look at an example, we can understand more clearly. Okay, so there's an inequality in the world. We pay doctors more than bus drivers. At the moment in Ireland, there's a big uh, debate because actually some of the train drivers are getting paid more than doctors, <coughs> right? But generally we, we pay bus drivers less than doctors, okay? Why? Because this helps to help the inequality because doctors are going to help the poor people with health care, okay? Especially if we have the government medical care. So we allow some inequality in society social or economic inequality, but we, this is in order to benefit the less advantaged members of society. That's called the difference principle. So, according to Rawls, uh, some people might say, it's fair. It's fair for me to earn more money because I'm smarter than you, right? Do you understand that idea? I'm smarter than you, so it's fair for me to get more money. But Rawls says no. He says, the reason that I'm smarter than you is because of number one, maybe the DNA, maybe my par I was lucky to be born smarter. Number two, maybe my parents had more money, so I got better education, okay? So he thinks, because it's just luck, people get some advantage over the other person. So I don't really deserve. Just because I'm smarter than you, it means that I have a better talent, right? Maybe naturally or because of nurture. So he wants to correct for this unequal distribution of talent without handicapping the talented. So we want to encourage the people who are smart to develop and exercise their talents but with the understanding that the rewards for these talents got in the market belong to the community as a whole. So this is like the idea of taxing and social redistribution. Okay? So uh, in the social democracy, people work hard and they earn a lot of money, but they need to pay the taxes. Okay? About 100 years ago in the US, there was no real social welfare, Bukchi, right? Even nowadays, the US doesn't have as good social welfare as Europe does. 
But 100 years ago, they didn't have hardly any social welfare. So if you didn't have a job, you didn't get any food or anything. Okay? But then we have this idea that it's not fair that just because you were born in that situation or with that DNA, with less talent than the other person, that you should starve, right? So we should have some equality. But at the same time, we want the people with talent to work hard. They need an incentive. We talked about before in capitalism. So the system we make is like taxing, using the tax, okay? I have more money than you, but I get taxed, and my tax goes to help you, okay? So that kind of a system uh, is based on the difference principle of roles. <clears throat> so there are different theories of distribution justice in history. In the UK, we had the federal system, or feudal system, or the in France with the Normans. That was like the son of the family always was promoted. Okay? And we had the system like in the countryside in England, at the top we have the king. Then we have lord. Okay? Then we have peasant. Right? Maybe there's a few more in between. Sorry. We have knight. Do you understand knight? <coughs> right? And then peasant. Okay? And then slave. So we had all of this kind of a system. So they, in India, they still have this kind of a system. It's called the caste system because of the religion. Okay? This group of people is the bosses. This group of people is always at the bottom of society. Okay? So in this system, people think just. I'm better than you because of my family name. Okay, the family name is very important. Do you understand? So I I come from the good family here. Then that's why the si the system is like this. I'm always going to be the lord, and you're always going to be the peasant. No change. Okay. In India, unfortunately, we have this system today, and we can see there was some demonstrations and riots in India recently. Okay about this kind of case system according to the religion. One group, you're born in that bottom group, you can't change. There's no way for you to get out of the group. Okay? So, libertarian, a free market with formal equality of opportunity. Uh, meritocratic, free market with fair equality of opportunity. And egalitarian, roles difference uh, principle. So we move Merit, merit means you do the job the best. Okay? So even if I look at Ireland and the US, have you heard of the US American dream? The American dream? American dream means that anybody can go to the United States and move. Even if you're at the bottom, American dream, you go to, in the US, you can get to the top. Okay? That's called the American dream. So a lot of people went to the US with nothing and then they became very rich. Not as easy to do in Europe, okay? Because in Europe, we still have, we don't have this, but still we have a little bit of, of stickiness in the society, okay? If you're from the very poor area or poor family, then maybe the, you don't get the job, right, as easily. Whereas if you're from the rich family, has the contacts, they get the job more easily, okay? So, uh, the US is probably one of the best examples of the meritocracy. Actually, I noticed the difference when I was working in the US too, that it seemed to me quite a fairer system, where if you can do the job well, and you're the best person for the job, they don't care about your family or your background, okay? Just you can get the promotion. So that is meritocracy. Then, uh, egalitarian, then we tax. People do very well here, they get to the top, but they're taxed, and then they support the people who don't have the same talent, okay? That's equal or egalitarian. Rawls thinks that's fair, because just you're very talented and you're not, right? Just example, I don't know, right? So you just were lucky that you were born with the talent, and she was unlucky, she was not born with the talent, okay? That's Rawls' idea. So you're very talented, you're a, a professional singer, Right? Very good at singing and dancing. But she has no talent. Right? 
So you pay your tax and support her. Do you think that's fair? You were lucky to be born with a beautiful voice, and she didn't have a beautiful voice. Do you think that's fair or not fair? Do you want to keep all the money for yourself? Not fair, why not? all your talent. Okay, some people might make the argument that somebody said to Rowles, but maybe she just worked very hard. She practiced singing and she studied singing very hard when she was young. So she deserves to get more all the money and she deserves to get nothing. Right? But Rowles said no. The reason that she worked very hard is because that's in her DNA. Her family has that kind of DNA. Or it's because of her school. Right? Some teachers encouraged her to work very hard. Or it's because of her parents. Her parents encouraged her to work very hard. Or it's because of her religion. Right? Maybe in her religion they encouraged, she got the religion class and she thought I should work very hard and make the most of my talent. So Raul says, anyway, even if you work hard, that's because of your situation. Do you understand? So he's saying, just you're lucky to be in that situation. And she was unlucky to be in that situation. So we should try to make some equality. But he accepts that we can't make exactly equal, right? If we make exactly equal, there's no incentive for you, okay? So not exactly equal, but some kind of redistribution, right? Redistribution means taking the money from somebody and giving it to somebody else. Redistribution of wealth. These days it's a big issue with growing inequality in the world. More people are talking about how can we redistribute the wealth more equally. Right? Especially with globalization, we can see, let's say, Facebook is just used all over the world. So just the owner of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, makes billions and billions of dollars, right? Whereas other people mightn't have a job. So how can we redistribute the wealth? Okay? So, <coughs> Rawls says, we do not deserve our place in the distribution of native talents. Okay? We do not deserve the superior character. So you might have a better character. Okay? And he says, you don't deserve that. Okay? It's based on your family and social circumstances. We call in English, family and social circumstances, in an easy way, is called nature and nurture. Nature, it's our family, we were born there. Nurture, the people we met, okay? We were, we, the education we got. Do you know that the human brain is not that different from 200,000 years ago? They looked at the skull from 200,000 years ago. Egypt uh, man, Yun. Tone, right? <laughs> and they saw the brain is about the same size and the same, almost the same. But did you know that 200,000 years ago they didn't have the wheel? They didn't have the wheel. Back feet, right? They didn't have the wheel 200,000 years ago. So you think now that you're really talented, right? You're really smart and you deserve much more money than her, right? But if you lived 200,000 years ago, you wouldn't even have thought of the wheel. Do you understand? By yourself, you wouldn't have been able to think of the wheel. The only reason you know about the wheel is because you got some education from the people before or the knowledge from before. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So if I took you as a baby and put you back 200,000 years ago, you grow up, right? You're not going to be some genius who invents electricity and the wheel and, you know, bread yeast and those things. You're, not going, you're just going to be playing with the stones, right? On the ground. So this is one of Rawls' points. That the reason that you have the good talent or advantage over other people depends upon your family and social circumstances. And especially in their early life. So you can't say that that was because of me. Okay? Because of me, I got all those circumstances. So, it means that the tax system requires the lucky people 
to hand over some portion of their income to help the disadvantage. Okay? It doesn't deprive them of something they morally deserve. So Rawls would tell you, you don't deserve all of that money. Okay? Because you were lucky. You had the right family, the right social circumstances to make the right character and become a successful singer. Okay? So at least you can give back some money to people who don't, didn't have the same opportunity. Okay? Did you change your mind now? <laughs> change your mind? Rawls convinced you with his argument? So then discuss this question with your group. It's not fair if the children of poor parents have much lower prospects in life than the children of rich parents, merely because of the family they were born into. Therefore, steep inheritance taxes are justified. Do you agree? So this is a debate in the moment in the UK about inheritance tax. Inheritance tax means that your parents die, okay? Your parents die, then what happens with their money? Okay, they give you the money. Or else they just give you the money when they're alive. They don't have to die, right? Parents give you money, okay, or a house, for example, a house. Okay, in the UK currently they have to pay tax. So they give you the family home. Let's say the family home is worth 500,000 pounds. They're quite wealthy. Okay, they have to pay tax to the government. 100,000, let's say, 100,000 pounds in tax. Okay? So the current UK government is quite right, right wing government. Right, David Cameron. So they decide that no, you don't have to pay tax on up to, they change the limit. Maybe before it was under 200,000. You don't have to pay tax. Okay? No inheritance tax for under 200,000. But they changed to under 500,000 now. Okay? So it means that uh, less people have to pay inheritance tax. So discuss with your partner. What do you think about inheritance tax? Do you understand inheritance? How do you say inheritance in Korean? Okay, so discuss with your group. What do you think? Our expense, is it okay to charge the state means high inheritance tax? Okay, so let's have a show of hands. Who thinks inheritance tax is justified? Inheritance tax is okay. Who thinks inheritance tax is not justified? We should have no tax on the inheritance. Okay. So Rawls, Rawls would think, yes, it's justified. Okay? Because just uh, we should try to make more equal society. So next uh, philosopher is McIntyre. So do you have any question about Rawls and Rawls ideas? No? So, so far we've looked at Aristotle, we've looked at Kant, we've looked at Rawls, 
Okay. Ideas and philosophy. So let's look at McIntyre. So he has the narrative conception of the self. This is a quote. Once you accept this narrative aspect of moral reflection, you will notice that we can never seek for the good or exercise the virtue only as individuals. We all approach our circumstances as bearers of particular social identities. I am someone's son or daughter, a citizen of this or that city. I belong to this clan, that tribe, that nation. What is good for me has to be good for someone who inhabits, has to be the good for someone who inhabits these roles. So, I inherit from the past of my family, my city, my tribe, my nation, a variety of debts, inheritance, expectations and obligations. These constitute the given of my life, my moral starting point. That is in part what gives my life its moral particularity. So McIntyre is focusing on the past, right? So he says people's moral particularity or moral philosophy, starting point, comes from their family, their city, their country. Okay? So I think what's good for my me is good for my country, good for my family, good for my city. And I behave with that kind of philosophy. So let's discuss this question to try and understand better. Okay? Do you agree that there is a kind of obligation of solidarity or membership? Patriotism is not a virtue but a vice, a prejudice in favour of one's own kind that we should try to overcome. So uh, here, solidarity or membership means working together. So do you think there is an obligation uh, if you're a member of a family or a, an organization that you have to have the same kind of thinking or work together? Patriotism is just your own country. Just thinking about my country, right? Yes. Do you understand patriotism? Yes. I love for the country. Love for it's your own it. country, right? Yes. So patriotism is not a virtue but a vice, a prejudice in favour of one's own kind that we should try to overcome. So do you agree? So just can focus on the second part. So patriotism is a vice is what it's saying. So patriotism is a bad thing that we should try to overcome. Okay, do you agree or disagree?
should overcome the IML, IML, IMF. Mm -hmm. So many Korean uh, dominate their gold. Yes, donated their gold. Yes, yes. For materialistic. Mm -hmm. So uh, South Korea overcome the IMF. IMF. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, that is uh, that needed to overcome the you know, something working together, right? Yes. But what about working? That's it. Working together just for Korea, or working together is that okay? Do you think it's prejudice in favor of your own kind? Yes. Koreans are just working together to help Koreans. So, when I was at the UN, I saw Ban Ki-moon speaking. Do you know Ban Ki-moon? Yes. So Ban Ki-moon said that people shouldn't think about their own family first, and they shouldn't think about their own city first, and they shouldn't think about their own country first. But instead, they should think as a global citizen. Right? What would you say to Ban Ki-moon if he tells you that? Don't think about your own family first, or don't think about your own country first. Instead, you have to think like you're a global citizen. Uh, Thank you, Moon is talking. He told you that. What are you going to say? I, I think that it is ideal. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is hard to realize. I think I should. Okay. Thank you, Moon. Might say, well, we have to try. We have to try to realize the ideal. Then what are you going to say? I'm back here. We have to try it. I have the same opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys are studying in the global business department, right? So hopefully you will think it's okay to be... I may, maybe the word patriotic doesn't translate directly to Korea. might have a slightly different meaning, right? Is it Egokshim in Korean? might be different, I'm not sure, right? But Generally, we should try to think of ourselves as a global citizen, okay? Citizen of the world, and not try to give some favoritism just for our own country, or our own situation, okay? Then it's a better way for the world to develop like that, okay? Especially if we're studying uh, in the global business, right? Filipino students, what do you think? Do you only care about the Philippines? <laughs> only Philippines is important? Don't care about anybody else? No. Hmm? What do you think? No, what, what? Do you think of Filipino people equally as Korean people? Or do you think more about Filipino people? Same, same as. You think they're the same? He, he doesn't think the same as you, right? No. He thinks Korean. He just have Korean people. <laughs> I don't care about the Philippines. Right? Right? No, no, no. I think the same. You think the same? Filipino yes. people and Korean people? Yes. No sure. difference? Yes. No? Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just you wanted to give the example of people working together from the IMF. Right? So it's the same, but we can work together in the world stage as well, not just our country. What about Kazakhstan? Yes. Hmm? Uh, I think all people are the same. Mm -hmm. Are you more likely to have somebody if they're from Kazakhstan, and then you don't care about somebody if they're from China? Uh, no, if there is... Uh I can help someone uh, if that mind where where he is from. Okay. So McIntyre is saying that you know a lot of people they have their moral philosophy is based on what they learned in their nation or their city. Okay, and this is what gives makes their character, makes their moral philosophy. So Last question, what is moral character? Is it what you tend to do, or is it your beliefs and attitudes? So discuss with your partner. Do you think moral character is more what you believe, or what you do? 
going to sound different. doing and believing, right? So what is your moral character? You believe that you should do this, or you act like that? Which one is it? steal, right? I believe that I should stealing is wrong. But then I steal her things. Right? Attitude means I believe stealing is wrong. But even though I believe stealing is wrong, I can't help myself. I have a problem. Right? I just steal from her. Do you think that's the important thing is just I believe stealing is wrong? I know that I'm doing wrong. That's important. Even though I keep doing, I know it's wrong. Okay. Anybody have a different idea? Who thinks it's what I do? Our character is what we do? Well, we can, we can see this debate and also in religion. Some people say in religion, the main thing is that you just uh, believe this way. Other people say no, you have to act also, right? You have to act in that way too, is important. So then let's finish.